Welcome back everyone, I'm Professor Rhett Smith from ProtonGuru.com. Today we're going to cover Lesson 4.1. Here we're starting our material on pi conjugated systems. Now we know that resonance delocalization stabilizes molecules. We learned that way back in Lesson 1.7. And we've usually seen this with charged species or radicals. But delocalization can actually also stabilize neutral species. All that is required are orbitals of appropriate energy and geometry on neighboring atoms. So let's consider a simple diene in which two double bonds are separated by only one single bond. Well, we have a pi bond, and remember that the pi bond is made by overlap of two p orbitals. This is what we refer to as an isolated pi bond. So considering the simple diene, if we draw out the p orbitals overlapping to make each of those two pi bonds, we can see that in the space in between, you have a potential where it looks like you have two p orbitals right by each other, which is very similar to what we think of as a normal pi bond. Well, let's think about how we could draw some resonance contributors to the structure to figure out how we can delocalize the electrons to take advantage of the potential overlap of orbitals in this space. I could push the electrons towards the right-hand side of the molecule, which would give us a species like this. Now, that's not a great resonance contributor because you've had charge separation occur by pushing those electrons in the way I show with the red arrows. But we can also push the electrons the other way. If we do push the electrons towards the left, then we would get a structure like this where we've pushed a minus charge here, pushed a pi bond here, and left this carbon with a positive charge. Now if you think about the potential resonance hybrid structure you could draw for that, you see that at the end of the molecule you have either a plus or a minus on the left, either a minus or a plus on the right, and then one structure in which all the carbons are neutral. So thinking about drawing the resonance hybrid, we just have to draw in the charges and bonds that approximate all three of these structures put together. So I'm going to do that right here. None of the sigma bonds move around in resonance because you're not allowed to move sigma bonds around. In some of the resonance contributors, we have a double bond here, so we use the dashed line to show that. In some contributors, you can have a double bond here, and in some contributors, you can have a double bond here. Now, because you have the potential for plus charge and minus charge on this same carbon, you don't actually have any distribution of charge. Instead, you have the pi electrons, indicated by the dotted line all the way down the length of the molecule, delocalized all the way across the molecule. And these type of molecules featuring alternating pi bond, single bond, pi bond, single bond, are called pi conjugated molecules, and that's what this lesson's all about. Now we shouldn't confuse pi conjugated systems with these cumulated systems where we have two CC double bonds going to the same carbon. So drawing out in the line bond structure, we'd have it like this. Remember you need p orbitals to overlap to make the pi bonds. So here I show two blue colored p orbitals overlap to make a pi bond. And I show these two red colored p orbitals overlapping to make a pi bond. You can see that because the p orbitals are orthogonal, they've got this 90 degree angle between them in the molecule, that the resulting pi bonds also have a 90 degree angle between them. So the geometry trigonal planar of this carbon and the geometry trigonal planar of this carbon form planes in that trigonal plane that are orthogonal to each other. So you can't have the p orbitals overlapping along the whole length of the molecule like we had for the other example where the p orbitals could all point in the same direction. And this difference in the way the bonds are arranged leads to a difference in stability for the isolated pi bonds compared to these other two types of pi bonds we're talking about now, the conjugated and cumulated double bond. The delocalization of electrons in a system by resonance makes the system more stable from the delocalization energy we talked about when we learned about resonance in the first place. So we can place the pi conjugated double bonds at a greater stability than the isolated alkenes. This is in sharp contrast to the cumulated alkenes, where we can't have any delocalization. And these cumulated alkenes are less stable compared to isolated CC bonds. This now gives us a pretty wide range of abilities in terms of figuring out the stability of alkenes. Way back in lesson 1.11, we talked about how to tell the relative stability of isolated alkenes. More substituted is more stable, and in the case where you have an equal number of substituents, less sterically encumbered is more stable. Now we see that pi conjugated are even more stable than any of those isolated alkenes, and the accumulated are less stable. 
The question arises then, how do we figure out how stable an alkene is? Well, the CC double bond stability can be quantified by measuring the heat of hydrogenation, often given the symbol delta H sub H for the enthalpy of the reaction, where you take a compound with a carbon-carbon double bond, react it with hydrogen in the presence of some type of catalyst, and you get the CC single bond where you've added two of the hydrogens from that hydrogen gas. We'll learn about that reaction in a little more detail later on in the course. But for now, if we consider a five carbon chain with one isolated alkene that's monosubstituted, right, this alkene has one chain coming out of it, versus disubstituted, or two isolated monosubstituted alkenes, or a pi conjugated compound with five carbons in the chain and two double bonds, or a compound with one, two, three, four, five carbons in the chain that has a cumulated set of two double bonds going to the same carbon. All of these compounds, when reacted with hydrogen to get rid of the double bonds, will all make the same product. So, if we think of an energy diagram, and we have alkenes of different energies, but they all lead to the same product. So if we think of an energy diagram like this, and we think, well, they're all going to make the same product. They're all going to make pentane when the double bonds go away and make single bonds with hydrogen saturating all of those carbons. Well, if we think about measuring the heat of each of these reactions, and they're all at the same end point, then by comparing those heats, we can see which one was the least stable. You can see that higher energy being less stable will lead to a higher heat of hydrogenation compared to an alkene that's already kind of stable. So the less heat that's released, the more stable your compound is. And remember that a negative enthalpy is heat being released. So if I take and hydrogenate one alkene here, I get negative 30 kcals per mole of energy approximately. Now if I had two of them that are both monosubstitute just like this one, in the absence of any additional stabilizing or destabilizing forces, I'd expect about 60 if one of them gives me 30. And that turns out to be true. Well, what if I have, instead of a monosubstituted alkene, if I have a trans disubstituted alkene? Well, we learned that the disubstituted alkenes are a little more stable than the monosubstitutes. So we should get a little less heat out, right? The alkene would already be a little more stable than the monosubstitute, let's say. That turns out to be true. It's about 29 kcals per mole, 28.6, that we get out of that reaction. Now, what if we take and do a pi conjugated system? Now, if there's no extra stability or anything, we would expect this bond to give us 30 kcal per mole, because it's the same type of bond as we saw up here. If this bond doesn't have any extra stability, it's a disubstituted trans alkene like this one, right? So we'd expect about 28. So, okay, if these two bonds don't have anything special about them for being pi conjugated, we'd expect about 58.7, negative 58.7 kcal per mole. What we actually see is we only get negative 54.1. That means we're getting a little less energy out, which means the alkene was already about 4 kcals per mole lower in energy than we'd expect if we just added up the two isolated bonds. That's a way that you can measure by how much is the pi conjugation stabilizing those alkenes. On the other hand, we see that we get a lot more energy out than expected if we do the hydrogenation of the 1,2 pentadiene, which has both double bonds going to the same carbon, the accumulated bond. That means it's somewhat less stable than if we just had the two isolated alkenes. So it's higher in energy to start. So these sort of measurements can provide us a number and proof that what we're saying about the stability of these alkenes is in fact true. In our next lesson, we'll talk about how these differences in the stability of alkenes, the potential for resonance, leads to differences in how pi conjugated alkenes react when compared to the alkene reactions we learned for isolated alkenes in section three of our book.